we're going to dive into Gerald Mincy's comments, and he's not going to play. It's ruled out. So, but he's a former ball who liked to take shots at Tennessee after he moved on to Kentucky. Do you take a little bit of extra pride in beating those guys? Um, and also the circumstances around Mincy's departure, because you know Tennessee has had offensive line woes. Uh, could they have used him this season? Mm, arguable. All right, so let's uh, let's get into that right now. Brought to you by Quality Tire Pros, serving Chattanooga's community since 1957. All major brands of tires, full service, automotive, brakes, alignments, oil changes, and more. QualityTirePros.com. QualityTirePros.com. Stop by and tell Bo that Dave and Off the Hook Sports said, "Hey, Bo." All right. Here are my thoughts on. Mincy. From oh, my uh, yeah, from my understanding, Mincy wasn't necessarily shown the door like Tennessee's defensive backs were last year, where they thought they could definitely upgrade at that position. However, I don't believe that Tennessee went overboard in praising Mincy to try to get him to stay, and they certainly didn't line up more NIL dollars to get him to stay. So it, to me, says a lot about a young man if, and, and I don't mean this to sound mean, Caleb, but it says a lot about the young man and maybe where he is in life if he has to take a few more bucks to play for Kentucky than he does uh, to uh, to play for Tennessee. Addison Nichols was a different situation. You know, he's going to an offensive line coach and a very good offensive line coach, and he was not going to play. So first, your thoughts on on Mincy leaving, and what was the shot that he took at Tennessee on his way out the door? Well, he took a few shots where he said, like, I can't wait to play at Tennessee, and that he gave Vol Nation his all and didn't like the respect and things like that. He said that he he said that Kentucky's offense is more is faster paced than Tennessee's, which I think was an outright lie. Um, following the NIL stuff, I'm with you and him following a few more NIL bucks. You're right. It does say a little bit more. And I think one of the sadder things is, I don't know Gerald Mincy's full background, but I, I know he was a foster kid. I, so there probably are some struggles there. Let's just be honest. Um, so you could really understand that. I mean, let's face it. I mean, if we're talking, if let's say Gerald Mincy just, Stuffs and giggles is a two hundred fifty thousand dollar a year player, okay? Which I know sounds crazy, but that's about where we are nowadays. Um, to to be an elite player gets it into seven digits. An elite quarterback gets even beyond that. But let's say he's a a two hundred fifty thousand dollar a year player. Well, if Kentucky comes to you and says we'll make you a five hundred thousand dollar a year player, that's a big difference. I that mean, that is. Wouldn't most people leave their jobs, even if even if you didn't like the culture as much, even if you didn't think you could win at a high level, would Michael Scott go to another paper company for double the money that he knew was not going to ever sell as, as much paper as Dunder Mifflin? Well, <laughs> perhaps. Well, well and, and, and it's, you know... I've never been in these situations, so I can't talk about short-sightedness or not, but it can be short-sighted. I mean, there was a glaring, obviously, case of someone who, because of their background, made a short-sighted decision. Dave, you know the story. Scotty Pippen asking for a seven-year extension on his rookie contract because he wanted to make sure he could take care of everybody in his corner before, just in case he got hurt. So he took this hard, you know the story, right? Took a horrible seven-year deal worth $18 million. Two years later, the dream team happens, and the NCAA quadruples in popularity. If he had just waited till his free agency, he would have been worth a hundred million more dollars than yes. what he got. Yes. It was, he could have bought a lot more alcohol nowadays. <laughs> Not the truth. Yeah. He got a seven. Year <laughs> Not the truth. If, if he, he got a seven year, $18 million deal. And if he just waits two years, he's going to get a five year, hundred million dollar deal. That's some Greg Sinky negotiation by Scotty Pippen. Yeah. I just threw a shot at Greg Sinky. Anyways. Um, I would say with Gerald Mincy following the NIL, I think it was somewhat short-sighted. I think he was sold a fake bag of goods with Bush Hamden and the new spread offense. I think he got shocked at some people 
from Tennessee taking shots at him leaving because in this day in football and in every day in football, people and fans will take shots at you leaving if you were starting for a team. I don't think he's handled it well. And so two weeks ago, after all the shots he took at Tennessee in the offseason, he started taking shots at the players that were his teammates. And he retweeted a Rocky Top Insider post on the PFF grades of Tennessee's offensive line against Florida. Spoiler alert, as you know, Dave, they weren't good. I mean, and they called him out individually, the players. And obviously Lance Hurd had a 38.3. But they had Cooper Mays, Dane Davis, Jackson Lampley, John Campbell, Andre Carrick, Javante Spragans, and Jan Hurd, uh, Lance Hurd had all their grades. Now, the question is, and I want to ask you this, do you think he was taking a shot at the whole offensive line without me? Or was that a direct shot at Lance Hurd specifically? Since they might have actually offered Lance Hurd more money than Gerald Mincy and that upset Gerald Mincy. It seems like Gerald Mincy's upset about that. Yeah, that could be it. Um, in this day and age of transfer portal, do, do you take more pride in beating a player who transfers from your school? Yes, hammer them. No, all good. And according to this, Pippen's son plays for the Grizzlies. He does. Did, did he you does. know that? I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Yeah, he does. That's cool. Because um, Michael Jordan's son's dating his mom. Michael, well, I mean, and also snorting cocaine on the side whenever he's like, <laughs> whatever y'all think about the Michael versus LeBron debate, I think it's objectively true that LeBron won in the parenting field. Like, even if you don't think Bronny well, he won in the, the he won in the person field too. Yeah, like I mean, he's Le- he, he paid for like what forty five hundred or fifteen thousand or something kids to go to school with his foundation. Yes. Yes, and and he actually was involved in his kids' lives, unlike Michael Jordan. So that there's there's well, that. not all of them. There's one in Knoxville that he wasn't a big part of. All right, but well, no, that's what I mean. I, no, no, no. LeBron was involved in his kids' lives. Michael oh, Jordan was okay. not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, the kid, the kid was um, properly funded. For those that don't know, look it up. All right, so uh, okay, uh, so, so go ahead, go back to your point. Yeah, so with so the- so yeah, yeah, we're going way off topic here, but talking about Joe Mincy himself, um, he's not playing on Saturday against Kentucky. I mean, against Tennessee. I just wonder, like, does him not playing? Do you th- are you happier if you're Tennessee because you think Gerald Mincy would want to clearly wants to show a little extra ump, or are you more upset because you want to humiliate him? Well, I ask our uh, on our poll question. I asked that question, um, and not surprisingly, uh, I, it's uh, yes. Hammer them. Do you take more pride in being a player who transfers from your school? Yes. Hammer them. No. All good. That's not the same thing, though. Would you, if Dave, do you think if, because we just watched Arkansas and Tennessee, Tennessee wanted to hammer the transfers. Guess what? The transfers got the best of them. Addison Nichols actually played pretty well in that game, and Danico Slaughter played well, too. Um, so my question to you is, would you rather, if you're Tennessee, would do you wish Gerald, how about this, James Pierce, who would have gone up against Gerald Mincy? Do you wish Gerald Mincy was playing so you could humiliate him? Or are you more happy? He, are you happier he's not playing because he may have actually put on a little, played a lot better than who else you're going against? <laughs> I thought you were going to say put on a little weight. I think that you, I think you would, I, I think you would take a lot more pride in hammering him and beating him. I think you'd rather him be out there. And he, he's, he was the starter. So yes, you're correct. He would be a better player, but you would rather be. You would rather him be out there. And and let's be honest. I mean, Tennessee, and they're fine in the interior of the offensive line. Now, as soon as I say that, somebody will get hurt. But with Spragans, Coop, and um, Andre Keurig, you're good. And Mincy never had the feet to play tackle. So it's not like he could have helped the balls play tackle, Caleb. So that's just kind of where Tennessee is right now. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And look, I mean, Mincy, would he, would he, let me ask you this. Would he have part one played, started, part two been an option at tackle when everybody seemingly got hurt in Norman, Oklahoma? Yes, he would have been an option at tackle. I mean, again, Gerald Mincy, if, for those who don't remember in 2022, he and Jeremiah Crawford split reps at left tackle. Remember that, Dave? And Darnell Wright just locked down the right tackle side. Yes. Splitting reps at left tackle, you got to give Gerald Mincy credit. They protected him and Hooker well. Now, I think from my eyes, and you know more than me on this type of stuff, but 
it seemed like Jeremiah Crawford was always in on the important drives, wasn't he? Yeah, and I don't think that it's – I don't think this offense is all that difficult to play tackle, which is why I've been surprised by Hurd. I think it's just make sure and direct the pass rush outside. Just don't get beat inside. Which is literally think, what Lance Hurd's been unable to, like, avoid doing. <laughs> yeah, through the first quarter of the Alabama game, he was continually getting beat inside, and I think it affected Nico's confidence. Um, so – I don't know that he would have been a factor. Uh, I really, as a matter of fact, don't think that he would have been. Um, but but maybe, maybe it's another body they could have run out there at tackle. But I think they wanted an upgrade at that position. And I think they saw Hurd as being that upgrade. And it was as simple as, do you want uh, this Napod work body truck or do you want another one? One may be more expensive, but they'll take care of you at work. Trucks, all about trucks, trucks that are actually available, trucks that help you maximize your profits by having the right work vehicle. Now, time is money. The perfect work vehicle doesn't break down, has all the space to carry what you need. That's what work trucks is intent on offering while other dealerships just can't do it. Contracting is about time. Work trucks saves you time. The less back and forth trips and trucks that pass the highest standards to be put to work. The process is also quick and easy when choosing a vehicle for work trucks. Cargo vans, utility body trucks with an app hide work bodies installed. Pickup trucks of all sizes, anything special like cranes or dump trucks. Work truck supplies vehicles to people just like you and get you back on the road tomorrow no dealership run around if you're a contractor you need to know work trucks and that's a fact service industry work trucks the entire inventory is right there online clinton highway in knoxville downtown birmingham work trucks llc.com work trucks llc.com they'll find the perfect truck outfit it make sure it fits your needs to a t work trucks with an x llc.com proud supporters of the Tennessee Vols. So, uh, from a, I wrote one time in a uh, a college uh, uh, exam or what, what do they call those things? A paper. I mean, what, what do you write in college? They got a fancier name, but it's a, it's a research paper essentially. Mm-hmm. And I wrote that some of the appeal of sports is the, and I wrote this at the time where Deion Sanders was bouncing back and forth from the Niners to the Cowboys and all that good stuff. So I, I, I wrote part of it is the soap opera. So I, and I think I, I wrote masculine soap opera. Is this a, an, an added aspect that we, we didn't expect that is actually very good for the sport? that you have these storylines that, hey, Addison Nichols once played at Tennessee, and if Tennessee ever plays Lance Hurd, I, LSU, you can go the Lance Hurd route. I mean, what are your thoughts? Is this is this a good thing for the sport? Because I think it just generates more and more interest. Yeah, I think it's a good thing for the sport. I love it for the sport. Um, now, from the other side, you're going to hear a lot of this in the near future, which is that there's going to be one of the things that people don't like about the NFL that they always loved about college is the loyalty factor. They felt it was easier to, you fell in love with players more. It felt like in college because they, they were committed to the college, but quite honestly, guys, I'm going to be honest with y'all. The love wasn't always reciprocated because the players, a lot of times while they gave their all for the university, there were players who may have performed well, but they were trapped in, as you talk about Dave and what should have been an illegal contract. Wouldn't you rather see players who willingly choose to play for you over three or four years because they want to play for you. And then you can really fall in love with those guys. Most of the players on these teams, I'm just going to tell y'all even before NIL, most of them already were mercenaries. Yes. There was Al Wilson and John Henderson and Eric Berry who just were just, and Peyton Manning were just superb people that, you know, Dave really wanted to win where they were at. But most of these players were thinking about their, they were going to do their, they gave their all for Tennessee. I'm not taking that away from them, but they also were focusing on what was best for their future. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. I go with that. And I'm going to go a little it, bit. Yes. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go and ahead. isn't it better if in the NIL age, the guys that do stay, you know that they really do love Tennessee even more, don't you? Or whatever school you're a fan of. Yes. Agreed. Agreed.